We are back at it again. Players have downed tools. We have reports coming out of leagues, coming out of the dressing room that some players feel that Eric Ten Hag is about to be sacked very, very soon. Here we go again. It's the same thing we have happening every two to three years where players just down tools and do not feel like playing anymore. What we saw over the weekend against Tottenham Hotspur was remnants of what we've seen before under managers like Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But where does that leave the club? Where does it leave Ineos? Can Ineos sack Ten Hag? Because once again, the players have down tools. And who is to blame for this? Welcome to the Red Devils Den. Let's get into this video. As always, we have a player revolt. We have a player revolution where players just do not want to play anymore. Who are these players? Because for some reason, they get the manager sacked. We think we turn over a new leaf and the same things start happening again. Who are these players and why do they never get called out? Why are their names never mentioned in these articles? When the same story comes out every two to three years, every two to three years, we get a story coming out from the dressing room, from sources in the dressing room that some players feel that the manager is about to get sacked, regardless of the result, regardless of if we win or not, it is his time to go. Who are these players that are deciding this? Now, I think there's two ways to look at this, and I'll start at the top first. I'm tired of blaming the Glazers, so I'm not even going to bother speaking about the Glazers. But unfortunately, they are still here. And they are a huge part of the reason for the failure of this club over the past 10 or so years, 10, 11 years. Unfortunately, Enios have come in and they've taken, what, 20 something percent of the club? I don't know, whatever. But they're in charge of the footballing side of the club. So what that means is they're in charge of the tactical play, they're in charge obviously of the manager decisions, they're in charge I'm assuming of the player decisions which I don't really think they're in charge of but I'm going to speak about that a bit later. They're supposedly in charge of the football link part of this club. Now when Ineos came in the first thing that they came in to do was they came in to bring a structure which we see. We see a structure of a CEO, a director of football, uh, we see a good structure around the manager, we, which we've never had before. We've never had competent people in those positions, and these are quite competent people. We've gone and gotten people from Man City. We've gotten people from Newcastle. So it makes sense that we have a good team above the manager. Now, unfortunately, what didn't happen was that when this rebuild started, we didn't get rid of the old stuff. So basically what happened was we had a house that was built, but instead of demolishing that house first, we've just started building on top of it. So everything is still there and we're just starting to build on top of it, hoping that maybe it disappears. It's not going to disappear. It doesn't disappear. It has to be gotten rid of. And the biggest issue that I think we have built over this club is we have got too many high earners in that club. Naturally, with a big, big wage comes a big, big opinion. Now, I'm not saying that these specific players are the issue, but I'm also not saying they're not the issue. Let's look at our high earners at Manchester United. Currently, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Jaden Sancho, yes, he's currently on, on loan, Casemiro. That is our 300,000 club. Those four players are currently on 300,000 or above per week. Those four players. Obviously, Jaden Sancho is on loan, but I think. He still has to be mentioned because he has been a huge problem for Man United ever since he signed. Those are our 300,000 club. Underneath them, we have the 250 down to 150,000 club. Harry Maguire, we have Christian Eriksen in that mold, if you want to call it. We have Mason Mount in that mold. We have Anthony in that mold. And Victor Lindelof just a bit underneath that. So... I've named almost 10 players that are just earning too much money at that club and not really adding much worth to it. If we went into it a bit more in detail, which I couldn't really be bothered to do because the problem is these players 
are still going to be here if and when this manager goes. They're still going to be here. There's no way we can get rid of them. We didn't get rid of them because there was no funds to get rid of them. We couldn't write off their contracts because you have to pay them out their contracts. So you just let them sit and hope that they behave and play well and listen to the manager. This has obviously not happened. And I think obviously Bruno Fernandes has come under a lot of criticism. He has been a very, very good player for us. But unfortunately, that contract should not have been given to him. And he actually, this is an extremely controversial take, but he actually should have gone to Saudi Arabia. Why was his agent looking around for different clubs at the end of the sum at the end of the season last season during the summer? Why was that happening? It was made very, very clear that his agent was in Europe speaking to clubs like Barcelona, PSG, and Saudi Arabia as well. Why was he looking for a different club? I think there were conversations that were being held about Bruno Fernandes, mostly because of the amount of money he wanted. Obviously, he was offered that money because that's why he stayed. He stayed because he was offered that new contract with this amazing amount of money every week. Now, unfortunately, it put Man United in this horrible position again, which makes you think, who is still calling the shots at that club? We all know who's still calling the shots at that club. It is not Sir Jim and his team of Avengers. It is not them. The club is in ridiculous debt. There is so much money that has been taken out of the club by the Glazers over these past 15 years or so. And there is just no money to write off contracts like Liverpool would do, like Newcastle would do, like Man City would do, and like Arsenal have now been doing over these past three years under Arteta. There is just no money and there is no backbone to do it, unfortunately. And this will always come and bite United in the behind. Because you just cannot trust these players. These players are simply, a lot of them are simply just here to pick up that paycheck and leave. We saw it against Tottenham in this past weekend. We saw players out on that pitch that were just not interested. And I would say it was close to about seven players on that pitch. Both of Eric Ten Hag's signings and of signings that were not his. Now, the thing that you have to be very, very aware of with players downing tools is yes, leaks are going to start happening, but they're doing this in order to protect themselves, to make it look like the manager is the problem, so that when he does get sacked and whoever comes in, comes in, we have a bounce, we go on a winning, what was Ole's winning um, run? 11 games of winning, not just unbeaten. Ole Golnes Solskjaer came in and he won 11 games back to back. Not just an unbeaten run, no draws, winning. That's usually what happens. 11 games is almost three months of games. So that, that's what would happen. And that's purely to show that this manager was the problem, not us. But then three months goes by, we sing a song, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets a contract. Three or four weeks later, a month later, these players say, we're done with this as well. Let's move on. We need a new manager now. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets sacked 10 weeks later. Now. Unfortunately, there are a few aspects to blame, to blame, but there are a few elements to look at that we still cannot get rid of. Number one, the Glazers. We can't get rid of the Glazers. Number two is the players. We can't get rid of the players. We can, but we can't get rid of the players, unfortunately. And number three, we cannot get rid of what has been coming along for so many years now. I'd say ever since uh, Alex Ferguson left, is this thing of Man United recruiting almost mercenaries. Man United recruiting players that I don't really think are that interested in playing for United. And I hate to bring this up, but let's have a look at a player like Casemiro. Now, realistically, for a player like Casemiro, yes, Real Madrid were looking to move him on because they've brought in Camavinga. They were looking to bolster up their, their midfield and bring in a younger set of players, which they did. And Casemiro was let go. Why would Casemiro choose Manchester United over Liverpool, Man City or Arsenal? Knowing that Man United are going to be nowhere near top four. 
are going to struggle to get into the Champions League, are going to possibly struggle to get into the Europa League. If we didn't win that FA Cup, we would have had no European football anyway. Casemiro would have known all this. His agent would have known all this, but still he chose to come to Man United. Why? There's only one reason why he would choose Man United over other functioning clubs in Italy, in Turkey, in England even, clubs who are competing for titles, clubs who are in the Champions League year after year. He's a multiple Champions League winner. He's won everything. Why would he come to a club that he knows is going to struggle? Money. He chose that route because of money. Bruno Fernandes chose to stay because of money. It was known information that Bruno's agent was going around to clubs in Europe and Saudi, seeing what they would offer while they wait for what Man United would offer in terms of his new wage. And this is going to be a constant, constant issue because we are not recruiting players that actually want to play number one for the club, number two, play for the manager, and number three, play for the fans. We have too many players that could not care less about any of those three things. And it's starting to show, it started to show a very long time ago. Jose Mourinho called it out. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer called it out. Rani called it out in a very, very blunt, blunt way, saying that this club needs open heart surgery. And Jose Mourinho, not that long ago, said that there are still three players at Man United to this day that he said seven years ago should have been sold. So it, it is a very, very interesting topic. And once again, we have players absolutely deciding that they do not care. Uh, but there's always lots to speak about. This could be a massive week for Man United. Uh, there could be some big decisions coming. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video.